Hey, good morning, friends. Today is uh, Friday, the 26th of uh, January. Hope you are doing well. Uh, cold, damp, uh, soft, wet ground <laughs> around us. Um, this is in, in Colorado, they called this the mud season. This is sort of when it's not quite winter, but it's certainly not spring, and the ground is just full of mud. And I was looking at the yard yesterday, and, you know, we have dogs, and just looking at the big sloppy mess <laughs> that is out there, wondering how we get these footprints, uh, muddy footprints, tracked into our house. It's pretty easy to figure that out, um, but that's where we seem to be right now. Uh, in the book of Psalms, we are on Psalm 11. Uh, yesterday, we <clears throat> prayed a prayer of, um, a, you know, a, a prayer that cries out to God for deliverance and for protection. Today, we're putting, we're, we're seeing the psalmist put his trust in God. Um, the line, the first line is, I take refuge. In the Lord, I take refuge. Refuge is a sense of place of shelter, a place of protection, a place of rest. And he's saying, it's in the Lord I take refuge. The Lord is not a place. Um, the Lord is 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 a, is a you know is beyond description, right? And, but somehow, in the midst of the bigness that is God, there is rest, and there's um, protection, and there's help, and there's joy, and there's peace, and there's all of these things. So, um, so that's where we are. Let's take. A, Let's listen to Psalm 11 uh, together and hear what God might have for us today. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to me, flee like a bird to the mountains? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They have fitted their arrow to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His gaze examines humanity. The Lord tests the righteous and the wicked, and his soul hates the lover of violence. On the wicked he will rain coals, a fire and sulfur. A scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. And by the way, in Hebrew, the word for face is um, is is a sense of is presence itself. The face of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. So, in uh, the upright shall see his face. The upright shall know his presence. Our gospel reading this morning, continuing on in the fifth chapter of the book of John, Jesus said. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I'm doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you because you not you do not believe in him. You do not believe him who has who he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you will have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from humanity. But I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. 
Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? I invite you to join me in our prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Loving God, as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death in the rising of Christ, and you bring us blessings in him. We thank you today for the ministry of word and sacrament. We thank you for those who serve and care for others. We thank you for the affection of our friends. We thank you for your call to love and serve one another. We thank you for the presence and the power of your spirit. I invite you, friends, to lift up whatever prayers of thanksgiving you may have today. And now, God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm, and you brighten the lives of those who need you, all who need you. So today, Lord, we pray for the church in the Pacific region. We pray for the good stewardship of all of creation. We pray for those who are isolated by sorrow and sickness. We pray for those who are suffering from mental anguish. We pray for all who seek the way and the truth of Christ. I invite you to lift up your own prayers of petition. Holy God, your love is higher than the heavens. Your grace is wider than the sea. Awaken our hearts to the joy of your presence and open our lips to sing your praise to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, as always, it's a joy to be with you in the morning uh, or whenever you're watching this. I always forget to say that. I do this in the morning. Maybe you watch this in the afternoon or even in the evening. So whenever you're, uh, whenever you're participating, um, it's good to be with you. And I hope you have a great weekend coming up. I look forward to being together in worship on Sunday. Uh, do watch for God in the presence, uh, God's presence in your life today. And uh, yeah, and we will see you again soon. Take care. <laughs>